What's going on YouTube? It's Teach back again with another video and today I'm giving you my quarter season NFL award picks and predictions. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. If you do, hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel with more football content like this in your life, just hit that big red subscribe button and comment your award winners through five games, a little over a quarter. But tell me who you think should win these awards as it stands right now. I'd love to have your thoughts. Let's talk some football down in the comment section. Now, obviously, disclaimer, there's a lot of really qualified candidates for all these awards. Five games is not a big enough sample size to know, is this person truly going to come away with the award? I would venture to say by the end of the year, we'll look back on this video and say, well, that person definitely fell off. Or, hey, wow, I can't believe they didn't mention this person. That's going to happen. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Starting with Defensive Rookie of the Year. For me, it's got to be a joke. I am a Notre Dame fan, but... This is exactly what the NFL has been looking for. He was that overhang defender with the Fighting Irish, and it has translated immensely for this Browns defense. I mean, he's all over the place. He's filling in run lanes. He's making tackles for loss. He's been great in the passing game. I mean, there's not much more you can say. He's just been stellar. And the next two guys have been too. So right, this is one of the toughest awards in this video for me. Micah Parsons, he has had to do it at a lot of different spots. Starts the year as an off-ball coverage linebacker. Gets picked on a little bit by Tom Brady in that you know Thursday night game to open the season. But overall, I think he's done okay in coverage. And I don't think it's been as atrocious as a lot of people might have thought when he was coming out of Penn State. He's a really good athlete. Moves well. Good in space because of it. And as an edge, man, he has shown some promise. And you know things are going to get interesting. Randy Gregory balled out this past week against uh, Nate Solder for the Giants. We'll see if Dallas keeps him around, but then also what about Demarcus Lawrence? If Micah Parsons proves to be a you know every down plus level edge rusher, and he looks like a you know superstar in the making at that spot alone, let alone what he can do in coverage as an off-ball linebacker on top of it, things can get really interesting. Maybe you move on from Demarcus Lawrence, who makes a lot of money, or maybe you're not prioritizing Randy Gregory next offseason. It's good to have a rotation in that spot, but yeah, Micah Parsons has been fantastic, no doubt about it. And Adafi Owe, man, this is a guy who... Every time I watch him, it kills me. I'm a Steelers fan, but man, he is, he is a freak and he is just going to, he's going to end up being one of the best players at his position. I'm not afraid to say it. Like he is going to end up becoming a top 10, maybe even more uh, than that at, as an edge rusher. I mean, the athleticism shows like he, we knew he was a freak coming out of Penn state, but now he's in a system where the production is coming suit. And when he makes plays, it's in the biggest moments, right? That forced fumble against Clyde Edwards, he layer. That's the reason Baltimore wins that game. Had another huge play this past weekend on Monday Night Football against the Colts. So some of it's, you know, primetime games. You kind of remember those moments a little bit more. But I've really been impressed. A couple forced fumbles, three sacks for Oway. I think he is a star in the making for the Ravens. And this is what we were talking about when he got drafted by Baltimore. They produce high caliber edge rushers. And now they got a guy with all the traits and qualities you want in a superstar at that position. And we're already seeing him bear the fruit of that labor. Offensive Rookie of the Year. For me, it's Jamar Chase, right? There was that whole debate between, you know, Panay Sewell, Jamar Chase, and I think, you know, not, even aside from what Panay Sewell's had his ups and downs, Jamar Chase has proven to be the right pick because he just adds so much to that offense. They finally have a vertical downfield threat, and a lot of it's chemistry with Joe Burrow. Burrow and A.J. Green just were not on the same wavelength last year. Green's also lost a step, so that didn't help, but man, what Jamar Chase has done has just been fantastic and, you know, really... Really happy with uh, what the Bengals have been able to do with them. And you throw them in the mix with T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. And C.J. Ozuma gave you a really nice game Thursday night against the Jags earlier this season. Things are really looking good for that offense. And it's helped for you to see Joe Burrow. Okay, yeah, he's a franchise guy, which we all thought. But now you have the validation behind that thought. Mac Jones, it hasn't been perfect, but he's been the best of the rookie quarterbacks to this point. And I think he's passing a lot of the, the tests that you want to see. Rookie quarterback, can he play patient? Yeah. Will he take the check down? For sure. Now I want to see him do the opposite. A lot of times you'll see rookies, you know, go for it all. Boom or bust. And, and then also sometimes they're a beat behind. There are about a second late making decisions and making throws. Hasn't been the case with Jones. He's been on time for just about every read, at least in big moments and ones that I can remember off the top of my head. But now I want to see him try to push the ball down the field and see him take some big shots. But early on, he's been the most impressive rookie quarterback. This obviously could change. We're going to start seeing a lot more of Justin Fields. Maybe Trey Lance retains that starting uh, quarterback spot with San Francisco. So time will tell. Obviously, this is just a quarter of the way through the year. And Rondell Moore, I mean, that sideline catch last week. Everybody's talking about it. But, dude, that catch was unbelievable. And then what he can even do on bubble screens. 
They already had the role carved out for him, and he's just a big play waiting to happen, simply put. And he has taken an offense that was already pretty good, and he's taken it to a whole new level. Really liked watching Rondale Moore this year. Comeback player of the year, Dak Prescott. I mean, this is a layup. This is an easy one. He was the betting favorite coming into the year. I think he's at minus 175. Everyone else is in positives. Uh, so it makes sense. And Dak's been the biggest reason why the Cowboys are serious contenders in the NFC. You see it on your screen. And I stand by that. I mean, Dak Prescott has been fantastic. And it's not even just he's making throws. He's going you know, to push the ball down the field. It's what he does when he gets the play call from Kellen Moore. And once he gets the line, what he sees on the field and his ability to control the game right there. It's been stellar. He's proven to be one of the smartest quarterbacks and just he's getting to that cerebral territory where it's hard to check what he can do to you at the line of scrimmage. So Dak's been fantastic. Nick Bosa, uh, he's back to being one of the best edge rushers in football. And that's obviously a huge sign because without that edge rush for San Francisco, that defense would be left to dry, right? Fred Warner's great, but the secondary has been less than stellar. So without a pass rush, it's going to be completely exposed. Even with Tomiko Ryan's, you know, playing a lot of the same coverage principles that um, Robert Sala was running when he was their defensive coordinator in San Fran. Bose has been fantastic. And I mean, he's an elite level edge rusher, quarterback's edge. They garner the award, so it makes a lot of sense. And then Joe Burrow, kind of like what we just talked about with Dak Prescott's scary injury. We knew he was good. He has just validated this year, and it's also helped having my offensive rookie of the year to this point, Jamar Chase, in the mix. And, and Burrow, the reason he's not higher on this list, the reason he's behind Bose is because there have been games since he hasn't gone fully to Joe Burrow, right? Only 18 passes attempt against Pittsburgh, and that's happened a couple times. And some of it's play calling, right? Like, it seems like Zach Taylor really is insisting on uh, keeping Joe Mixon involved heavily and a lot of first and second down runs, even with, you know, uh, long distance of yardage to go to move the chains. Nothing Burrow can control there unless he wants to change the play at the line of scrimmage, which, you know, that in itself is a different discussion. But Burrow, when he's been throwing the ball, it's been really crisp, and it's a good sight. That's a franchise quarterback in the making there in Cincy. Defensive player of the year, Trevon Diggs. I mean, I know Xavier Howard had 10 picks last year and didn't win the award, falling behind T.J. Watt and Aaron Donald, who Aaron Donald's third because he's the best player in football. Uh, defensive player, for sure. Taking away position value, you might have an argument he's better than Mahomes. So he always will have a leg in this argument. So he comes at number three. But dude, six picks in five games. And, and it was for a Cowboys defense that we didn't expect to be good. And he is a huge reason to why they are exceeding expectations on that side of the ball. And that's also a huge reason why they are legit contenders in the NFC. So Diggs, obviously, got to be my front runner right now. Miles Garrett, you could exchange this down to Max Crosby. You'll see second ranked PFF edge rusher for Garrett. Crosby's number one. Only two sacks, not the sacks or the end-all be-all. You should really be focusing on hurries and pressures. But I think Crosby's more inclined to see that production fall off. Also, he's had a lot more favorable matchups than Garrett. Um, so, been a little bit more impressed with how Garrett has played and who he's had to beat to get that production. And he's also uh, a little bit better in the run game as well. And Garrett's just also a freak. So, right now, I feel really confident that it's Diggs. And if it's not Diggs, it's Aaron Donald because, you know, he's the best defensive player in football. So, why wouldn't he get the award? Which is in a safe argument to make. Offensive player of the year, I'm going King Henry back to back. I mean, he's on pace for another 2,000 yard season. It helps having the extra game, but even on a 16 game pace, he'd be at 2,000 yards. And no Julio Jones and AJ Brown two weeks ago, just AJ Brown, though he wasn't super productive this past week against the Jags. It's been the Derrick Henry show for Tennessee, and Tannehill's been quite good as well. But I mean, Henry is backpacking this team, and I mean, he's 6'3, 2, whatever. He can handle a whole team on his back, it feels like. And every single obstacle people have wanted to put in front of him, okay, well, he's about to hit X amount of carries. He's going to fall off or, you know, he's, he's hitting this age mark. He is just, just like Josh Norman, stiff arming them to the ground and running right by them. So Henry continues to impress him because of that offensive player of the year. Kyler Murray is my runner up. And honestly, once we get to the MVP discussion at the very end, whatever quarterback, I'm not going to spoil it, isn't my pick. I think there's a great argument for them to be Offensive Player of the Year. So whether it's Murray or Herbert, Tom Brady even, he's he's going to be in that discussion as well. They all make sense here. So you could just basically put this as QB not winning MVP and, and uh, the Offensive Player of the Year second spot. Murray's been great. They're undefeated right now. Makes a ton of sense. And Devontae Adams, man. Like, this guy, like, we know where the ball is going when you watch Green Bay. And it just doesn't matter. His ability to shake defenders to the line of scrimmage is second to none. His ability to get a clean release and his route running is so clean. Like even the 49ers, a good defensive football team. We knew Aaron Rodgers was looking for Devontae Adams, but 
Still able to loft it up and over the head of Fred Warner. Find Adams, big gain, sets him up for the field goal with Mason Crosby in that one. I mean, he's just unguardable. And I mean, because of that, you have to give a lot of credit there. Offensive player of the year in consideration for sure for Adams. Coach of the year, I'm going with NFL sweetheart right now, Brandon Staley. On top of everything he was talking about with the John Gruden situation yesterday, he, he's beloved by the analytics community because he's aggressive on fourth downs and he's not afraid to try to go get seven as opposed to settling for three, but he's also a football guy. He's also just a cool story, a former quarterback, now a defensive coordinator or was a defensive coordinator. You know, that's kind of what people are expecting him to fix first. It's been really interesting to see how it's unfolded. And like I say on your screen here, the Chargers are officially ahead of schedule. I think most people, myself included, saw this as a good football team and they won the last four games last year. And I thought the Chargers would be in the mix. But I didn't see them going into Arrowhead beating the Chiefs. Now, I know the Chiefs are a little bit weaker than we had uh, anticipated coming into the year. But also, shootout victory against the Browns, a really well-rounded football team. And this upcoming week, big chance to prove it all the more against the Baltimore Ravens. So they've had a tough schedule. They've been able to answer the bell for every call. Love what Staley has done. And I think most impressively is I knew he would make the defense better but he's been able to do it immediately. I thought by week eight, we would start to see the Staley effect come in. It would just take some time for that defense to gel. Nah, it's been right away, which is super impressive. And it just speaks to how much command he has over that locker room. It's been really, really awesome to see him turn around the charge and put them in serious contention. Then we have Cliff Kingsbury. Look, he's coaching the last undefeated team. For Arizona, I think they're 5-0 and because across the board, there's been progression. I think Cliff Kingsbury is a better coach this year than he has been in years prior. I think Kyler Murray is a better quarterback this year than he has in years prior. And the team, talent around Murray and Kingsbury, of course, like I said, better than it has been in years past. So all that kind of mixes together. And because last undefeated team, you have to mention Kingsbury here. Last but not least, Sean McDermott. Right now tied for the top seed in the AFC. They knocked off the Chiefs, which again, I know the Chiefs are underwhelming so far, but that was a statement when, and the Bills are not only knocking off the Chiefs, but they are bullying teams. That is just rude what they did to the Texans, and they're pushing around everybody other than the Pittsburgh Steelers, but that game is clearly a fluke at this point. That's coming from a Steelers fan. Sean McDermott's done a fantastic job, and he's turned that defense around. That's what seriously put the Bills in the spot where if you argue they're the best team in the AFC, I can't, you know, disclaim that that defense is seriously legit this year to go on top of a great offense so a ton of credit there to Sean McDermott let's talk MVP that's probably why you're here for this video I got it as Justin Herbert this is a really close one between him and Murray because both these quarterbacks have been better this year than I had anticipated and in turn their teams are better than I had anticipated so this is going to be one that's close down the stretch if these two guys continue to play the way they are reason I give it to Herbert is he just has not faltered while you look at Kyler Murray, not that he played bad against San Francisco, he just wasn't as great. Still made some big throws, right? Like he found Rondell Moore on the sideline and that ball was perfectly placed where only Moore can make a play. Also later in that game, I mean, absolute dime to DeAndre Hopkins who was going takeover mode late in the game. I'm not trying to discredit Kyler Murray. I'm not trying to anger any Cardinals fans, but I think Herbert's just been a smidge more impressive. But this is a big week for both these teams, right? The Chargers taking on the Ravens and the Cardinals. Take on the Cleveland Browns, and the Browns looking for the bounce back after they lost to the Chargers. And, you know, big injury report there for Cleveland. And again, another discussion for another day. But if they're healthy, that would be a big win on the resume for Kyler Murray. So either one of these, it's a coin toss for me right now. I'm just going with Herbert just a smidge ahead of Murray. I just did not think he'd be this good in year two. But, man, he has been everything advertised and then some. And then Tom Brady... Honestly, if we were to take away the context and you know throw away the, the game results, Tom Brady's been the most impressive quarterback this year. He's been the best quarterback in football. I mean, throw for throw, he's been the best, which is crazy because he's out-dueling the likes of Herbert and Murray and Aaron Rodgers after week one. But Brady's been that good. He's doing it at 44 years old. Now that the, the finger injury has come up, we'll see. I'm recording this on Thursday before the Eagles game. So if he bombs here, please don't hold this against me. I'll put something in the video when I edit this. But... Tom Brady up till this point when I'm recording has been stellar so you have to include him in the MVP conversation a lot of people still have him as the MVP and I can't knock that either but hey that's the fun of a video like this and that's why I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section tell me who you think should win these awards and maybe who I left off and I should have included I know Lamar Jackson's probably one for the MVP that would be in here if it's more than three names but give me your thoughts down in the comment section love to talk some football with you hopefully you all enjoyed today's video if you did hit that like button it really would help me out a ton and if you're new to the channel with more sports content like this hit that big red subscribe button 
That's going to do it for today's video. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, my name is Tej, and I'm signing off.